Hello super user, so today we're going to learn about part layout, specifically how you can create really really good looking parts really really fast. We're not going to go over the minutia detail of avoiding collisions, that's a topic for another video. Instead we're trying to get the overall flow and layout of the page. And actually at this point this is the number one most requested topic on the channel so I hope you find it interesting, enjoyable, and incredibly useful. Uh, so first a brief overview of what I would do if I was actually creating a part layout for this music. So the first thing I would do is create the multi-measure rests. Second thing, uh, as you can see the multi-measure rests are not the same size so I would just space it out like that you know if I wanted to do like that but not quite yet. Uh, then I normally like to group things in groups of four. Uh, it's not hard and fast rule fours, but it's often fours. More specifically, you just want to follow the lengths of the phrases. And then finally, this, this last line, as you can see, you know, putting it in fours is really tight. Putting it in twos is really spaced out. So we're actually going to keep it like this. And instead, we're just going to use the measure tool to expand the multi-measure rests and make it more even between the top and the bottom. So this is what my part layout for this part would be. So now that you actually can see, you know, how fast it can really be to create a good part layout, uh, I'm going to walk you through some of the tools that I'm using. So as you might remember, the first thing I did was create the multi-measure rests like that. So what I did is I used the stream deck and from the top of the menu, come over here to edit and then just multi-measure rests, two button clicks, you are there. You can also go up to here to edit and multi-measure rests, create. Just make sure you have the entire selection highlighted. Typically what I actually do is I just have in my keyboard Meister script for creating the parts. One of the many things it does is just automatically create the multi-measure rest, so I usually don't have to do that by hand. You know, the next thing you notice me doing is a lot of part layout, and specifically, you know, highlighting measures and bringing them onto one line like that. Now all that is is a keyboard Meister script. So the slow way of doing that is you highlight the measures Go up here to Utilities, Fit Measures, and then you know make sure you have the lock selected measures into one system selected, and hit OK. That is the slow way. Instead, to do that entire process, I just created a keyboard Meister script, which I called Lock Selected Measures. It's really simple. It basically just does that many command. You know, presses the button Lock Selected Measures into one system in case it's not already pressed, and then click OK which allows me to do it like that. Now another incredibly useful way of getting the layout is with the JW plugin called JW Fit Measures. I did a video on that before, link in the description, but if you were to click the plugin, you can see it has a bunch of different options, either distribute to X number of systems or distribute to relative positions. I usually use fixed, and so you know like here with these height of the measures, fix it to one system, okay, it does that. What it also allows you to do is let's say you highlight three systems like that, go over here to the plugin, and we're gonna fix this to four systems, getting nice layout like that. And again, I have these assigned to two more keyboard shortcuts. There is, where is it? Music fixed. This is fixing it to a specific number of systems, in this case one or there's music, in this case I just titled it Music Don't Change. That's just making sure that it goes to relative with zero changes in relative systems. Let's say, let's say I actually had this set up, right? I'm like, well, this is really not spaced out well. I could highlight everything and then move it to relative the same number of systems, just a lot more evenly spaced out. Now the last and final trick, which is actually a hidden trick that you didn't see, if I zoom out, is you'll notice that I actually have the exact number of lines per page already set up in the document. You'll see that even on the second page I have the exact number of lines and the exact spacing already set up in the document. That way I never have to worry about vertical spacing or making sure there's you know the correct number of staves. It's already set up and this is actually done in the settings. And the reason why it's done in the settings is specifically that way I never have to touch anything. I never have to say, okay, I want, I don't know, like, you know, four systems on the first page or four systems per page and do that. I used to do that all the time. As you can see, I have that macro set up. But that's kind of slow and redundant. If it's a setting, let's just have it be a setting. 
And so to see those, go to Document, Page Format, Parts. And here are, are all my settings. So specifically, we want to look at the you know, staff height is four spaces. Uh, staff scaling is 92%. This is actually going to look fairly large, uh, especially if you're printing on 8.5 by 11. And even on 9 by 12, this is on the larger side. Uh, but it's really good for sight reading. And then if you look at the system margins, you can see top six, right and left is zero, and then bottom is 5.25. These are specifically that way, unless there's huge amounts of blood to your lines, there will never be a collision in between systems. And it's specifically these numbers again. That way they take up the entire height and making it look uh, perfect on every single page. You may have to play with your own numbers for your own settings, page size, staff size, and everything, but that's just what I have. So that's how you get part layout done quickly and easily in Finale. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button so I know you want more content just like this. And I also have a Finale course that deals with a lot of these intricacies on how to use Finale quickly. Link is in the description. And finally, each week I post new content about how to use Finale to its fullest, so if you don't want to miss out on any of those videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified whenever a new video comes out.